Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio as not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, or medical well-being. And now, the best of Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Good evening, good evening, and what a wonderful evening this is going to be. But you know, I'm a little prejudiced. I think each and every week is a good week. And as usual, I have brought to you a most fabulous, wonderful guest. Her name is Anita Eubank, and we're going to be talking about this beautiful book called The Rainbow of Hope. But as I do each and every week, I'd like to instruct all of you to go to the website. That's journeyswithrebecca.com. And there on the website, first of all, you'll be able to look at um, tonight's guest and get a little bit of a head start on all of this. But I'd also like to say thank you to my sponsor, which is Fate Magazine. And to get more information or to obtain your own copy, please visit their website at www.fate.com mag.com or just click on the link in the front page and it'll take you there and also to organic health and beauty now um i would like to instruct you to go to the um our world news because this week we've added a couple of funny features down there for you as uh, something to brighten your day um and i think with tonight's show it's going to fit right in as far as brightening your day um also want to talk to you about um the, some of the um information that's there the leading crop circles there's some information there from the researchers of ed and chris sherwood also about the climate changes, you know, it's a pretty serious, serious, serious topic, which I'm also going to be bringing guests on here in the next few weeks. We're going to be covering that particular um, hot topic of our climate changes. And also, um, as I do all the time as I talk about the UFO extraterrestrial things, there's some information there for you. And before I forget my uh, past guest, Mark Kimmel, um, we are going to be working in conjunction with each other, and I will be bringing him, uh, I will be hosting him here in the Kansas City area, so stay tuned to, on the website for that further information as to when that will be posted. And also, um, please visit my store if you are interested in purchasing a meditation CD. And I would like to take this time, though, to remind everyone of the premise that's behind Journeys with Rebecca Radio Show. It truly is a show of inspiration, enlightenment, knowledge, exploration, but most of all, sharing. Each week, I try to bring to you people who have messages. Messages to share with both not you only, but me as well. It's a show that I have brought forward that's for you, the audience. Now, that being said, <clears throat> I would like to invite you to write with, write with me with your questions because next week I have a lot of emails to answer. So if you want your questions answered, please don't hesitate to write them and mail them at mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome our tonight's guest, who is Ms. Anita Eubank. Now, um, Anita, I'm going to give her, I'm going to kind of give her her introduction here. Uh, she actually began her career as a contestant in the Miss America pageant and went on to be a successful career in Hollywood as an actress, a model, and a singer, which is where I remember her from with the award-winning Ray Charles Singers. Now, she's transitioned from the performing arts to the healing arts by earning a Master of Arts degree in psychology and becoming a certified expressive arts therapist, which I'm going to ask her about here in just a few moments. She's also an energy healer and a spiritual teacher. She does counsel individuals and teaches seminars internationally. And Anita is the author of the book, which we've, which has brought her to the show tonight, The Rainbow of Hope, 
She is known for her intuitive, warm-hearted, and compassionate style, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the show, Anita. Thank you, Rebecca. It's absolutely <laughs> my joy to be here. Well, I think what we're going to do here, Anita, is, is first of all, is we're going to talk a little bit about your past, because you've had, you, you, you said to me before we started, well, you have quite a colorful past, yeah. and I do, and you've come from a whole different genre to, to come forward in this manner in a more of what I will call more new age metaphysical mm. concept, or certainly spiritual concept from your beginnings, and I think that's kind of an amazing journey in and of itself there. But we also have a shared interest, which is the Master Zinga Shah. Yeah. Um, And I would like to talk to you about him, too, briefly, because I think he was the most fabulous guest. So everyone, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Anita Eubank and Journeys with Rebecca. Don't go away. Have questions about your love life or your job? Get your private psychic reading from Rebecca. Call to schedule an appointment at 1-888-958-2768. That number again is 1-888-958-2768. Welcome back, and what a show of inspiration, of fun, and exploration we're going to have with Miss Anita Eubank. And welcome back, Anita. Thank you, Rebecca. All right. Let's, let's talk a little bit. How did someone who started out as a Miss America contestant um, also a uh, singer in the Ray Charles Band, as well as um, some of the acting that you've done in Hollywood, come to be where you're at at this moment. <laughs> it's perfect for your show, which is Journeys with Rebecca, because it's truly a journey of the soul. And it it was the particular path that my soul needed to journey uh, to discover the, the deep secrets and the importance of uh, spiritual values that I found in my life. Well, I find that, you know, I find, excuse me, I find that kind of interesting that, 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 you know, being in Hollywood and being around that, that whole energy yeah. brought you to this point. Although I'm not saying that people from Hollywood don't, don't have certainly spiritual experiences, but there's so few that, that express those or, or share that with the general public. Yes. I guess it's not Yeah, you know, business. actually being in show business drove me further because it was so challenging. I had to find my foundation. And when I started out, I was sort of lost and I need, I needed to know the truth of who I was and the truth of what was God. And I use the word God. We could use all different names for the source, the great mystery. But I needed to make that connection for my core, my foundation in order to make it through the experience of being in show business, which which was really very challenging. <laughs> you know, to say the least, I'm sure it was. Or I'm sure, you know, uh, it's something that I've looked at. It, it's a life that, that, that is it's very strenuous on those yeah. who are in that. People don't understand. They think it's a life of glamour. It is right. hardly that. Yeah. Sometimes um, I would sing with the Ray Charles singers, for example. We might be playing... In Las Vegas, which is, you know, hardly, you know, what you think of as a spiritual place. And in the daytime, I would go out and sit under a tree in the sunlight and just, you know, draw comfort and healing from the life force. And I'd come back and do the 8 o'clock and the midnight show. And somebody else in the group would say, Anita, I don't understand you. You know, how do you, how do you do that? So in some simple way like that, to, to draw sustenance, you know, from the beautiful life force while playing in Las Vegas. <laughs> that, that I can I can understand why somebody would question that if they didn't understand what right. she was. She thought I was strange, but she was a little <laughs> little envious in a way, you know. Well, well yes, and I think strange is good. Which <laughs> <laughs> right. one of those things I've been called and I've been called worse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> strange is good. <laughs> well, you know, I I think you made a statement and I I'd like I kind of like to to um expound on that a little bit where you know, you said you were looking for yourself in a sense. Yeah. And, you know, both of us having this little brief conversation that we did prior to the show about about our, our past. You know, um, I grew up very differently than you mm-hmm. did, and you, you took a different path. But isn't it interesting that we're, we're both in kind of the same space yeah. <clears throat> without ever having met each other? But I think it is is that some people go through life, and they don't have the need to look further than whatever they've created in their world, whether, mm-hmm. you know, just, just going about their daily business. They don't question too much. They don't They don't. Um, they don't seem to let things affect them or they don't seem to sense things on a different level. And that's great because not everybody can all be the same. But then there are some people such as myself and, and you know, I think I can put you in this category 
we're, we're, we're saying there's something missing. There's something that right. I'm not getting here. I need to, I need to figure out what makes me tick. What makes the world go round? What, what, what? And therein lies that need. It's like, it's almost like a burning passion. I don't yeah, know like what a yearning line in a way. Of, right. What line of work you go into, I, it, it, it still ends up being here. You know, you still find yourself here. Right. And it's just really very right. interesting. I, it was just something that just kind of popped in and it just felt right for, for me to talk about that for a brief moment, for whatever that was worth. Yeah, um, I would but, trust that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your book. You know, let, let me stop right here, though, before we get into that. You know, I, I have a lot of people that, that come on that are authors. And the reason I do that is because a person who has a message to give to the world, um, if they know how to put together um, any kind of written material, or in this case, yours is written and illustrated as well, hmm. they can't reach the masses. And this is, I always say that a, a writer is somebody that takes the passion and puts it into words, and then it gets into the hands of the people that it's supposed to. Oh, that's um, a great, that's, that's how a their passion thought. is expressed. And this is definitely a work of passion right here in front of me. It's absolutely gorgeous. Hmm. Tell us about The Rainbow of Hope. The Rainbow of Hope is about the journey of the soul, and it's about a little beloved soul that came to earth and found itself in a dark place. And just like you said, you know, what is that within us? Some of us feel that calling, that burning passion. The little souls felt this yearning to find the light. And I feel that if we would really listen, that, that each of us has that burning desire to find the light. And in this case, it was the understanding that the little soul was connected to a source of deeper meaning. Uh, he found the little, the shining golden thread of light, and this light was connected to source. And when, when, when the little soul found that, it was like all of his tr troubles and struggles that he could rise above that to find the rainbow of hope, which is the essence of love and light, which I think is synonymous with God. So when the little soul found that he was never alone and that he could always find this connection, then his natural joy and radiance could shine through. Well, I'm going to expound on that for just a moment, but may I have your permission to read the foreword by Dr. Uh, uh, Shaw? Oh, I would be so honored. Now, Dr. Shaw wrote this foreword um, in the front of the book, and here is it, um, and it's quoted. Millions of people search for soul wisdom and knowledge. More and more individuals pay great attention to their spiritual journey. They want to transform their lives and reach enlightenment. The Rainbow of Hope is a heart-touching story about a, how a soul can find love and light. The process of the lost soul in search of the light reflects the process from the dark to the light in so many people's spiritual journey. This story offers profound teaching. It gives the highest essence of the secret to personal transformation and the key to soul enlightenment. The essence is love and light. This book is for everyone from children to elders. The wisdom within it explains that everyone can open their hearts and minds to directly receive the love and the light of God, which is within everyone and everything every moment. I am inspired and have personally benefited from the Rainbow of Hope. I am confident that you will receive blessings from this enlightened the Rainbow of Hope is a direct message and priceless gift from God received through open spiritual channel of Anita Eubanks. This love and light will stay with you forever. May the teaching of this book serve you well. God blessing for everyone, Dr. Zinga Shaw. Now, I would like to share a story about this book once I received it. I have a grandson. I mm. have three grandchildren, but mm. the one story I'm going to tell you about is about my three-year-old grandson. <sighs> now, obviously, he can't read yet. So I have a coffee table, and on the coffee table was this book. And he opened up this book, and it's filled with all these beautiful, beautiful pictures. And, you know, there's something inherent when you when you watch a child in their discovery mode. And he is truly an all-boy boy. Yeah. So he's looking through this book, and he's talking about the sky and about the stars and about the light. He can say those things, and about the moon. And he's reading this story, turning the pages. Of course, I don't understand everything he's saying because I don't understand the language he's speaking yet. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that as he was going through this, he turned it page by page. And as he was turning it, he was reading this story. And when he got all done with the book, he closed it up and went the end and then put his arms up in the air and looked to the heavens. Oh and made some other statement I didn't understand, and then he ran off to play. Oh, my God. I was never so moved in my life, here is this child, that stopped in the middle of this busyness he was in, read this book, 
looked up at the heavens with his arms raised and said some kind of miraculous thing for himself and then just went about his day. <gasps> now, is that a story or what? Th- that's miraculous. Is that, 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 that is that a, a, a blessing story. Yes. Oh, I am so touched. I am too. And I had to share that with you. I've been waiting, by oh. the way. I haven't just, I've been waiting for you to come on the show so I could go. I must tell her what this book has done for my grandson. And not only that, but for everybody that comes in. I have a few of those. I call them a coffee table book because mm. everybody will pick it up and they will look at it. And then pretty soon before you know it, my guests that are in my house will, be, will start flipping through it. And I just kind of walk away and give them time to look at it. And everybody always says something about what a wonderful book that was. Oh. And you could just see the piece come over them because the illustrations in it alone um, draw that to you, I believe, yeah. in my the way that I feel about it. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a very unique book because it's, it is a story. It's not just for children. It is a story for um, adults as well because the only children I have in my house are just my grandchildren. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's just a fabulous, fabulous thing. Oh, you, that you is can, so beautiful. And I can tell you that my artist, had his own personal transformation and healing as he was making the art. And all along the way, um, Dr. Shah was filling the book with light in addition to all the light that came through when I received the book. So it's been doubly, triply blessed. So <laughs> anyone that even well, physically comes near works. it, you know, is receiving a blessing of the light and the love. Well, it, it, it's working. The magic in it is working. You've uh-huh. all done a very good job with that. All right. And, you know, Dr. Shaw, for those of, that might not know him, he has a, the most marvelous book out about a healing technique that, so, you know, there's another another thing that people can look at as well when mm-hmm. we're talking about this journey of inspiration, mm-hmm. which is life. His book Power yeah. Healing. Yes, he's fabulous. Um, he was a guest and on my show uh, last year. I, I'm hoping to have him back on again. Um, so I'm, I'm very thrilled with your um, artist, though, that had his most miraculous, Gary miraculous experience. Gary Pollitzer, yes. He he had his own spiritual journey, his own soul journey, because he he started out in sort of his own personal sadness and kind of a dark place, so he could make, you know, when the little soul starts out in this place of confusion, and my artist started out, you know, he says, oh, I can do all these pictures in the dark, but I'm going to have trouble when it gets to the light, because I have to feel it, or I can't make the art. And at one point in time in his little artist studio home, he was feeling especially despondent, and he was curled up in the fetal position on the floor, kind of. And all of a sudden, he felt himself surrounded by angelic presences. He could feel their energy and could feel love being beamed at him. He said he, said he felt that they were presences that were supporting his infinite good. And after that time, he absolutely got it that he wasn't alone and never was alone to begin with. And he was able to make all the light-filled images that came in the end of the book. <laughs> Isn't that something? Is that not divine intervention? Oh, such oh, divine my intervention. Gosh. It made a believer out of him. You know what? That's all it takes. Yeah. Oh, guys, we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Oh, got more of Anita, Anita Eubanks and the Rainbow of Hope. Stay tuned. Check out Rebecca's website for the latest Journeys news and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Welcome back, and you have joined me and Anita Eubank, and we are talking about all kinds of things, but basically about the book Rainbow of Hope. But now we're going to get into a little bit more fun stuff, too. You know, Anita, as I introduced you tonight, I told you I was going to ask you what a certified expressive arts therapist really does. Uh-huh. And um, so I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here and have you talk with us about it, because I think it's going to be really fun. Yes, I, 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 it was particularly, um, beneficial for me to become a certified expressive arts therapist because I have the background in theater and in art and acting, um, singing, all of that. But it's at one, at a more superficial level, you know, when you're just a performer. And so it felt especially important for me to take theater, art, music, dance, crafts, all of that, and use them as a healing modality. And the way that that can be used, art especially, is effective that way. It's it's a spiritual practice for one thing, and it's a way of entering into the subconscious and a way of going deeply into what truly is going on with us emotionally. 
So I, I find it a, a particularly effective in emotional healing. Well, you know, you talked about dance and music and all of that. Yeah. You know, l- l- we'll talk a little bit about music. Music, people listen to music. And I don't, for me, I can listen to a sad song, and if it has some kind of a meaning to me, I can become emotional, emotionally sad listening. Right. If a song um, is very upbeat, it has a dance beat, makes me want to get up and move. Um, if I listen to my meditation-type music, I become very serene and peaceful, and I can float. The right. music's very important, and dance is very important and I, for the soul as well as music. Because our bodies will start flowing and moving, and it moves that energy, and it allows us as an expression. But art, when we look at art, um, artwork on the wall, somebody's painting, uh, whether it be oil, watercolors, charcoal, whatever, it elicits a response visually. Mm -hmm. So when we take all of those things and we add them together, all of those things are part of the soul, part of the spirit of who we are. Yeah. So um, you have taken all of those things, and you put it into a healing modality. Yeah. So if someone was to come to you and say, I would like to be, you know, I would like you to help me, what would that entail for them? Well, I feel that when a person makes their own art, that the the art that they do spontaneously is something that reveals something that maybe their own mind doesn't comprehend. And one of the early things that I like to do with individuals to even discover what's going on with them is to have them keep an art journal and there are various ways of making art that are just like free-flowing expression that you don't have to think about it or have a plan or here's something that I'm drawing. It's almost like the colors that you choose are expressive of a mood. And then I have a writing process, too, where you can write about what you draw and just do page after page like this. And what's truly going on with somebody starts to come out through through the colors, through the forms, through the words. And then it starts to bring awareness to 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 what's going on, which is the beginning of the healing process. Well, I'd have to send you my artwork. I think you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think you'd go, I don't know where you have. I, I would not be the one to interpret your artwork. You know, it would be you that would start to write your story about it, and then and then you would tell me. Well, it would make no sense to anyone else. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. There, there was an amazing man who I. Um, worked with from Rome by the name of Lorenzo Ostuni, who did a theater process called Biodrama. And in this case, a person would go on a journey. There was a whole corridor that they would walk down and interact with mimes and that kind of thing. And they would basically be telling their own story through their physical movement. And then Lorenzo at the end, who was taking notes, then would tell them their story back. So in, in this form of therapy, it's like you're the artist and you're the storyteller and, and we're just being witness. It's very important for someone to be witness to another, to, to see them deeply. Well, now that sounds like that could be really interesting. I think I would have liked to have been part of a process. Oh, like you that. would have. You, oh. And you, I'm sure, would have had quite a biodrama, quite a story <laughs> to tell. I, I brought these when I was living at Esalen Institute in Big Sur and helped. I founded the art barn there. Um, I brought the biodramatists from Rome to participate there, and 40, they did 40 biodramas, which was quite a thing, and um, it would have been lovely if you were there by the Pacific Ocean having your biodrama done. Now you're tempting. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) I like it. (laughs) I'm sure you would. (laughs) The the person who who would be doing their biodrama, they would be, the, the mimes would dress in costume, and they would intuitively tune into the individual, and then they would show up in costume, uh, and it would it would invariably really reflect something about that individual. But that's a whole that's a very you know ornate form. We can get much more simple than that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I love to do a thing where where a person would um, dip a string in a little tub of ink, like black ink, and then drag it on a paper, and then look at the picture that they saw, and they go, oh, it's a frog. You know, and then they make a drawing of a frog, and then they'd write a poem about a frog. But invariably, they would go, oh, I'm a frog. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm frog-like because, you know, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) You know, I have found that a lot. Oh, stay tuned, and we'll be back with more of a new you make the show. Don't go away. Are you at a crossroads in your life? Or maybe you have a particular question or need direction in romance, relationships, employment, whatever it might be, it's time to talk to Rebecca. 
a truly gifted, intuitive, and clairvoyant. Call and set up your private consultation. Get that special insight you've been looking for. Call 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Find out where your life's journey will lead you. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. And we are here with Anita Eubank. Now, you know, Anita, one of the things that I've been remiss in is we talked at the very beginning, I was going to ask you about how the story of the Rainbow of Hope came to be. Yeah, that it's such a it's such a miracle in itself. It's it's a beautiful story. I love to tell you. Um, it, it's so amazing because when I was in my early twenties and living in Los Angeles at the time, I went to a psychic. It was the first psychic I had ever spoken with, and I remember a message that she said to me. It just penetrated my consciousness. She said, "You're gonna write a book," and. Those words, those simple words, absolutely felt like the truth, and they stuck in my heart, and they stuck in my psyche. But, you know, my life and all the adventures in my life came and went, and, and I kept thinking, well, what is this book? You know, when am I going to write this book? What will it be about? And sometimes I would start to write books, and I would go, is this the book? You know, and it would be some kind of wonderful writing, whatever, but it didn't really feel like it was the book. And... In 1984, I had this spiritual awakening, you could say, where I had uh, the ability to be in direct communication with spiritual consciousness, and that opening was very, very dramatic. And from that time, I consistently was in communication with um, spiritual, uh, a divine spiritual presence that sort of communicated with me, and I used that work in counseling and what have you, and I was in um, August of 2001, and I was journaling in the morning. I was receiving a message and journaling, and it's and the message was, believe in divine intervention, and miracles do happen. Your book is coming. And I was flabbergasted. I went, oh, my gosh, you know, and I was so excited. And round about that time, I met, Master Qigong Sha for the first time. I went to a learning annex, a program that he was doing about how to communicate with the spiritual world, and I thought, oh, here's a kindred spirit. I'd, I'd love to meet this man and, and see what he thinks about some of the beautiful writings that I'd received and so on. And I went to see him for a private session. It was the first time we'd ever met one-on-one -on -one in private, and I just crossed the threshold of his office, and, and it just flew out of his mouth. He said, you're going to write a book. And I went, wow, <laughs> this guy is absolutely spot on. And I said, that's right. And so then it felt like I needed his help. It felt tricky. I didn't feel so confident. It was one thing to to do all that I had done up to that point. But somehow receiving a book felt monumental. And so I, he said, well, just do what you normally do and talk to, you know, the stars and Mother Mary and whoever and, and see how it goes. But it wasn't, it wasn't clear, you know, it was like a tricks and games and it was a test to see if I had some sort of deep understanding. And so he was not fooled and he said, you know, Anita, he said, it seems to me that if God wanted you to have a book, that God would just give you a book. So why don't you say, God, would you please let the book flow out? And and that simple truth was was it. That was the key. And so I found myself having conversations with God. And one morning I was just in a place of deep rapport and prayer, and just tears were just coming down my eyes. And I said, I absolutely understand, God, that this is your heart. And this is a direct message from you, from the mind of God. And I deeply know this. And I heard the words, we will give you the book. And interestingly enough, the 911 disaster happened. Uh -huh. And and I had gone to a dinner party um, the night before where little children, like a family that was very conscious, had, a, had adults come and discuss. You know, their little child asked the question, when people do something bad, do they know they're really doing it? That kind of thing. And so 
that morning is when I had had that prayer. And then the very next day, 9.22, 11 days after 9.11, this story came, and it was the most amazing experience. It was like I was an instrument, and I was a flute being played by God, and that it was me. It was my story, that everyone's story that came through, and it was an instrument to help the children know how to connect with God and to heal the child in everyone. And it was like a message of hope that what the world needs now is peace and hope and light. And and this is the truth. And and the other was a wake-up call. So that's the story of the book. Absolutely beautiful. Isn't it? <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, there's so many things here that I'd like to just chat about real quick. A lot of the things that you said and a lot of things that Dr. Shaw said to you mm. are very simplistic in their nature. That's not to give them less credence because my feeling is is that as human beings, especially as we get adults, we have a tendency to overcomplicate life. Yeah. We overcomplicate the most simplest things in life. We overcomplicate it because if we don't, then we feel like maybe we're not doing enough or we've left mm. something undone. But when it comes to our spiritual journey, truly simple is better. That 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 words he said, just ask God to let the book flow. Yeah. I mean, how simple was that? And how then you simple. went in prayer and you asked, let the let the book come. Right. And you were answered, and the book will come. That's right. And how simple, you yeah. see. And but what a miracle! What what the whole thing? And simple is what children understand as well. And that's why children put us to shame. Yeah, with with their level of understanding and direct trust. Yes. Yeah. We can learn from them. We can. Oh my God! Hang on, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Rebecca. Journeys with Rebecca. Organic health and beauty. The name says it all. The finest health and beauty products on the planet. They're completely free of animal, synthetic, and petroleum ingredients. Fabulous guarantee. If you don't absolutely love it, get your money back, no questions asked. So log on to journeyswithrebecca.com and click on the organic health and beauty link. Hi, this is Rebecca. I have created Journeys into Meditation, a CD series. You know, it's a proven fact that those who meditate can create positive, permanent changes in their lives. So for those of you searching for a tool in this powerful process, you can find it on my website, journeyswithrebecca.com. Order your copy today of this positive, powerful, life-changing tool or call 1-888-958-2768. Talk with an intuitive touch. Journeys with Rebecca. And you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca, and we are here with Anita Eubank. You know, we were Anita and I were talking um, in between the commercial here, and the book here, The Rainbow of Hope, is about the process of a soul as the soul goes through and learns that it's connected. But through all of this, that whole process is what a human term, a healing process. And Anita and I both, I think, are kind of on the same page. Just because you've arrived to a point of, of healing some things in your life, some whether they be perspectives or issues or whatever you, you know, your, your circumstances, whatever. It's the healing process is, is, is an ongoing thing, such as the, in my belief, the evolution of the spirit. It's all part of the process. We're all, we're all a work in progress. And so is the healing. But I think I'd like to be real careful here with that term healing mm-hmm. because it denotes that people are sick or ill. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's not my belief that we're sick or ill. It means that we become more aware of maybe baggage or issues that we carry around or prejudices or whatever they may be, and we try to turn those around and let go of them so that we're not carrying that baggage around. And that in and of itself for me is, is what I feel is, a, is the healing process. And it's like a purification. Yeah, that absolutely. We're, that, and sometimes the illness or the sickness that leads us to, to go deeper in ourselves. And, and then the more we purify, I feel too that vibrationally we become more, more filled with light. And then, and then we as being can emanate more love, you know, by our very presence. It's, it becomes like a healing presence. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree with that 110%. Yeah. <laughs> before, before we run out of time, because this is our last segment, I want you to tell everyone now how they can get a hold of you, your website address, your email address if you care to share it, how they can get a hold of the book, 
and all that good stuff before we leave tonight. Oh, great. I'd be pleased to do that. So my website is www.therainbowofhope.net. Be sure you have the the in there, therainbowofhope.net. And my email, I'd love to hear from you, is anita at therainbowofhope.net. And you can purchase the book from my website or from Amazon.com. That's usually very convenient. And the book is being released in April, so major bookstores such as Barnes and & Nobles and Borders will be carrying it then. I'll be excited about that. And well, no, um, I feel very privileged, Anita, that I got such an early copy of it. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I got it before anybody else. Oh you got to jump on it, and I'm pleased that you did. I, I really love what you said about it and the experience with your little grandchild. Will you please share that story? I, I'm serious. Oh, I would, great lo- I would just would love to. Uh, maybe we can exchange that information uh, between us later. I would love to. Well, if there's, not- do we have time for another little story? Absolutely. Uh, there's. I was told um, there was a nun who teaches reading skills to, to uh, foreign language children, and there was one little girl named Maria who she gave a copy of the book to, and apparently Maria carries it around with her all the time, and then sleeps with it under her pillow. She was sleeping holding it, but her daddy told her to, it would not mess up the cover if she put it under her pillow. So she actually sleeps with it under her pillow. And and um, Sister Marilyn said that she saw that when the child read the book, that it was something deeper. It was like a connection that she had with it. I love that story. Well, I was as you were telling the story, mm-hmm. um, I was seeing this little girl, and she's absolutely... Absor- she's, it's like it, everything is being absorbed. Oh, interesting. Uh, and, and she is. She's, she's a very extraordinarily intuitive child, and she's very spiritually connected. Oh. And it's her safe zone. And this is how she makes her feelings at a young age um, concrete or real to her, is this book. Her feelings? Yes. Oh, her, that connection. That's... Because mm. how do you explain? I ask people, how do you explain God? Well, yeah. How do you feel? Explain the feelings when you touch God. There's no word. So right. the book is what makes it concrete for her. That's the book makes God concrete there. for her. Yeah, it makes wow. it concrete for her. You know, because it's a, it, it's not tangible. So the book is tangible, and it's her direct link. Well, there you are. That's the message that I got, that the book was to be an yes. instrument yes. to help children connect with God. And specifically this child, because she's, she's going to be a messenger out for, for many. Oh, I'm just she getting chilled by that. Yeah. What oh. a great story. Oh, yeah. We can tell them all night. <laughs> <laughs> Give us another hour. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that is really, truly cool. Mm. I love it. You know, Anita, this has really, truly been a, 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 a really great show. I've just so enjoyed having you on. Oh, thank um, and you. And I, I hope that once your book comes out and you start doing, because you will be doing other things, I'm sure you're aware of that. Mm. Um, you know, we need to keep updated with you and see what's going on next in, in Anita's world because I think there's a lot more for us uh, oh. to share with the audience out there. Yes. And I encourage everyone to write to you to give you feedback mm. and um, on tonight's show as well as to give you some feedback on the book. And as another reminder, your um, you will be up on my website. Your link will always be live. So if they can't remember mm-hmm. or they didn't get to write it down, they can go to journeyswithrebecca.com, mm-hmm. go to the past guest. Your link will always remain live oh, to your great. website as well as to your email so they can just a couple of clicks and get to you. Anita, thank you so much. Thank you. And many blessings to you. Blessings. I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoints or ideas. Now, you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discovery. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night.